Fabric masks are intended for use in community or public settings where there are COVID-19 cases and where physical distancing cannot be maintained, places such as grocery stores or on public transport. You do not have to wear these if you are not around other people, like if you're driving in your car alone. To be clear, fabric masks are not personal protective equipment, and they are not recommended for use by health workers in healthcare settings, nor for vulnerable populations such as people who are 60 or over, or those with underlying medical conditions. Those individuals should be wearing medical masks. Fabric masks are intended for source control. So imagine you are the source, and the mask is there to protect those around you. Fabric masks act as a barrier between the mouth and nose and the surrounding environment. We still don't know how much protective value fabric masks have for the wearer. That's why when you wear a mask, you're protecting others, and when others wear the mask, they're protecting you. So remember, the mask should be used as part of a comprehensive package of other infection control measures, such as physical distancing, hand hygiene, and respiratory etiquette. Before touching any mask, make sure you perform hand hygiene with either an alcohol-based hand rub or water and soap. For more information on how to wear the mask correctly, please check out our other videos. The study that evaluated the effectiveness of various types of materials used to make masks identified that the fabric mask should ideally have three layers, an outer layer, an inner layer, and a middle layer, which can be an insert or can be another fabric layer. The inner layer, which comes in direct contact with your face, should be a hydrophilic material, meaning it will easily absorb droplets from your exhaled breath. An example of this material is a cotton. It is important to select a light color such as white, which can help determine when it is soiled or wet. A good place to find this is in a woven or knit cotton t-shirt or material from a store. The middle layer should go into a pocket between the inner and the outer layer like this and should act as a filter. It should ideally be composed of a hydrophobic material. This should ideally be a strip of polypropylene fabric, which is a spun-bound, non-woven fabric material. The outermost layer should be a hydrophobic material. This means that the fabric will repel droplets and moisture. This can be made of a synthetic material such as a polyester or a polyester and cotton blend. This can be found, again, in a clothing item that is a knit pattern. So look around your household for items made of these materials and wash them before using them to make a mask. Although these three are the recommended layers to provide optimal filtration and breathability, there are other types of materials that could also be used and are mentioned in our guidance document. The importance of materials when you design a fabric mask is to ensure that it is both effective at containing droplets and it allows you to breathe easily. The fibers of the fabric must also be a balance between not too loose, which would allow the travel of droplets through the material, and not too tight, which can restrict the ability to breathe. You may choose to sew your own mask at home. There are a couple of designs mentioned in our guidance and you can choose one for you that is easiest to make. Since these masks are intended for reuse, we recommend washing them daily after a day's use. Also, keep in mind, if you're using a middle layer as an insert for the filter, make sure you remove it before laundering it and insert a new filter when you are using a clean mask. Otherwise, you can choose to make a three-layer mask without a removable middle layer. So find material that can withstand the highest possible temperature when washing. Ideally, you should be washing the fabric masks in warm or hot water of about 60 degrees Celsius with soap or laundry detergent. The materials should ideally be able to withstand boiling water. This means that a fabric coating such as a wax or elastic stretchy material would not be suitable. It is important not to use disinfectants to clean the mask as these are harmful chemicals and can be inhaled since you would have the mask closely touching your mouth. However, in instances where it is not possible to launder the mask in hot water or detergent, a fabric mask can be soaked with 0.1% chlorine for one minute and then thoroughly rinsed with room temperature water afterwards. When selecting your materials, you should find or purchase a non-porous container or sealable plastic bag to store your fabric mask when it is not in use and to contain the mask after it has been used 
and until it can be washed. We recommend either a disposable plastic bag that is discarded after use or a plastic container that can be wiped with 70 to 90% alcohol and left for a minute to dry. Anyone using a reusable mask of any kind must be aware that there are some risks involved in the prolonged use of a mask. Whenever the mask becomes soiled or wet, you need to carefully remove it and either dispose of it or put it in a container to be washed, followed by hand hygiene. When the layers of a mask become visibly worn out or the mask remains stained or soiled after washing, throw it out. A fabric mask should not be shared between different people. And when masks are continuously used throughout the day, you should have multiple masks to change whenever the mask becomes wet or soiled. We hope that with this material guidance, we might inspire you to design fabric masks using WHO's recommended materials. So stay safe and help prevent the spread of COVID-19.